All right, in 48, we have another one of these questions where we're given three different statements and we're asked to evaluate the validity of each of the three. What's going on in this problem is we have this real valued function f to find everywhere in R2. And what we're supposed to do is consider the graph of that function in three dimensional space. Okay, so the first statement says that if all the level curves of f are parallel lines, then the graph is a plane. So first off, when we talk about level curves, maybe think topographic map. I don't know, that's helpful to me anyways. If anyone else does some hiking, you might be able to picture it that way. So think about a line anywhere the height of the graph is equal to a given value. And then the question says, if those lines are all parallel, is the graph necessarily a plane? I mean, if the graph is a plane, then certainly all those lines will be parallel. But the question is about the converse. And that converse is false. The first example that comes to mind for me would be if we let z be equal to maybe x squared. Want me to draw it? Sure, I'll try. Maybe this is x and this is y and this is z. And I want the z coordinate to be equal to the square of the x coordinate, regardless of what the y coordinate is. So when the x coordinate is zero, I want the z coordinate to be zero. When the x coordinate is either one or negative one, I want the height to be equal to one. When the x coordinate is two or negative two, I want the height to be equal to four and so on. Sure, maybe something like this. Maybe I'll switch colors here for any y cross section. Our graph is just the standard parabola. So I got this parabola when y equals zero, but I'd have the same parabola when y was equal to, I don't know, three. Drawing in three dimensions is hard, but hopefully that gives you an idea. We kind of have this shape here. That's actually not too bad. Anyways, think about a given height. I don't know, z equals one maybe, sure. All of the points that have a height of one would fall on either this line right here or this line over here. Those lines are clearly parallel. Nothing special about one that would happen for any height. I guess this would be counterexample one. Level curves are certainly parallel lines, but the graph is not a plane. What about statement two? Statement two says the derivative of this function with respect to x and the derivative of this function with respect to y exists for all x and y, and both are constant. And so the question is, does that imply that the graph is a plane? Well, yeah. You take any point and move in the x direction and you change it at a constant rate. And if you move in the y direction, you change it at a constant rate. And because that's true for all x and y, you must have a plane. Don't like that argument? Okay, that's fine. We're told that the derivative of x with respect to x is some constant, maybe I'll call it c. We're told that the derivative of f with respect to y is some other constant, I'll call it d. Integrate these partial derivatives with respect to x and y, we get that f of xy is equal to c times x plus d times y plus some constant. I don't know, b, sure. I don't like using e. Recognize this thing? This is just the equation of a plane. Statement two is a true statement. Finally, statement three. Statement three says the mixed partial derivatives exist and are both identically zero. And the question is, does that imply that the graph is a plane? Well, good news, we don't even need to evaluate this because two and three being true is not one of the options. So the minute we figured out one was false and two was true, we knew our answer must be B. That's kind of cool. But since the purpose of this video is not to get the right answers, it's to kind of teach the concepts, I'm gonna go through and show why this is false. So first, just understanding what this is saying. This is asking you to take the derivative with respect to y, treating x like a constant, and then take the derivative with respect to x of that answer. Same idea here, but in reverse. So what we need is a function so that both those things will be equal to zero, but the graph would not be a plane. Can you think of any? Maybe one that's drawn ever so beautifully already on this page? I think this function will work just fine. I guess I should have called this f of xy instead of z of xy. I kind of like this notation because it more explicitly tells you that we're graphing on the z-axis, but whatever. In the language of this problem, I should have written this counterexample this way. If f of xy is equal to x squared, and we calculate d squared f dx dy, of this thing x squared. We first take the derivative with respect to y. With respect to y, x is just a constant. The derivative of constant is just equal to zero. So I'd get the derivative of f with respect to x of zero, which is clearly equal to zero. Now we go in the other direction. First take the partial derivative with respect to x. The derivative of x squared with respect to x is two x. So I have to take the derivative with respect to y of that two x. With respect to y, two x is just a constant. Again, the derivative of a constant is just equal to zero. Each of the mixed partial derivatives is equal to zero, but clearly the function is not a plane. Statement three would be false. The idea with these mixed partial derivatives being equal to zero informally just tells you there's kind of no interplay between the x's and the y's. So I couldn't have a function like, I don't know, x squared times y or something, but a function like x squared or x squared plus y squared for that matter would work out perfectly fine. They'd satisfy this criteria, but clearly neither graph would be a plane. Two is the only true statement. B is the answer to this question.